Alrighty, so you're going to be looking at the IP reputation section of the application, trying to understand what exactly IP reputation in 12 blacklisted even means. So when you click into that right now, you're going to see a bunch of information, a bunch of domains, uh, and a whole bunch of jargon. So let's jump into what exactly these pieces are referring to. Firstly, you can notice that it says over here 12 blacklisted. What the 12 blacklist is actually referring to is an aggregated value. So the way IP sending works at points in times is it will go ahead and this is the sender that was used. So these are domains that were used to send messages and a bunch of emails were sent from a bunch of senders. And sometimes those senders obviously are, even though they belong to the same domain, the way Gmail or certain SMTP providers or ESP providers work is they do not network really the message across the same dedicated MX server or the, the mail exchange service that's sending the message. Instead, the emails are going to be sent to a diaspora of IP addresses that are owned by the respective ESP. Let's just take Gmail in this essence over here. Now, let's quickly explain what's happening over here as you look at uh, this particular data set. Now, what firstly RDNS is and the importance of RDNS perspective to your email deliverability. Before that, maybe let's look at IP address. The IP address is effectively the origination of where your email signature is created and sent from. These usually will belong to Gmail itself. If you go ahead and take that and pop it into MX Toolbox, for example, you will see that it's coming from a Google LLC listed IP address. In addition, you'll also see something called a domain name over here as well. And we'll jump into that very quickly in one quick second. And the way I did that, uh, just for reference point, is I ended up doing a reverse DNS check where I took the IP address and then I figured out where the IP belongs to. Now, the reason why these two are important is because the sender IP address is particularly important in deciding whether you are originating from an infrastructure that is related to spam or not, and so on and so forth. Now, do note, yes, you are blacklisted over here. This IP is blacklisted, but these are by nature Gmail IP addresses, and most of the time they, they rotate in and out of blacklists that really do not matter. In that note as well, when you click on this number at some point in time in the future while you're watching this, this will actually show you the list of blacklists that you're part of, and you'll see most of them, they are not that important. It's just that Smartly covers every corner and case possible so you have the complete transparency as to why and why not you're being listed because the, the value proposition you can see over here very clearly so is we can see whenever the blacklist is a high number, you're either going to the spam folder or you're definitely loading in the inbox folder. However, whenever your blacklist is low, you can see quite clearly you end up in the inbox tab itself. Each time we can do a correlation to where the IP address is, is set to like a 142 from the looks of it, those seem to be doing quite well. And in this case as well, a 209. So you can clearly see that the sender IP of Gmails does make a difference in terms of the proactiveness of your emails landing in primary or secondary. Now let's jump into what an RDNS actually is. The reverse DNS check is basically uh, the way you can go ahead and convert a domain uh, into, sorry, convert an IP address into a domain. The usual way, uh, let's say normally a DNS, which is a domain name server, it translates a domain like, let's just say gmail.com to an IP address, right? But a reverse DNS, goes ahead and does the exact opposite. It converts the domain to the dedicated IP from which it was originating. Now, why this is important is because what Gmail and the, the respective ESP on the receiver side, which is our receivers, the seedless that Smartly does access to, is looking at the domain that was in their sender, the, the, the email that was used to send an email, or perhaps uh, in the network chain. And what's happening over here is when it does a reverse DNS check based upon this, it then allocates to that, and then that gets to give you the RDNS. Now, let's quickly break down what these things are. Firstly, most of Google's network, if not all of Google's network, can be identified using the, uh, the, the, the domain that resolves to 10100.net. That is pretty much what belongs to Gmail in itself. And this also points to the fact that emails when are sent are not originated from the SCP that you're sending it from, in this case, smartly. They're originated from Gmail in itself and from their IP addresses. So in this case, it's matched this domain to this RDNS, to this IP address or vice versa. And what you need to do is basically understand that, yep, usually these accounts, you can say, all right, well, I put this over here. Why is it pointing it to this part? Why is it not pointing it over here? Now, effectively, the way it works is when you do a lookup of this, it will usually point to this particular endpoint when you're doing this particular check. Now, depending upon when you're watching this video, the RDNS checks will be more dynamic and they may change. The discrepancy you're seeing between the two is simply because of the way sometimes DNS resolution occurs. And what matters is the direction or the step in which the 
uh, the query is being made in terms of where the DNS change you're looking up, that information is going to be separated. But by note and note, if you do 100.1e.100.net, uh, those are the entire network chains that belong to Google by itself, as long as, as well as this particular one that you see over here. In essence, they're both related to Google, but the variation that you're seeing is effectively which part of the DNS chain is being queried or the caching behavior at that point in time uh, in general or the way the data was being interpreted for that particular email that was received from this particular service, um, uh, sorry, this particular ESP, the seed list that was used over here as well. So these things matter in terms of defining your blacklist and information because from the sender domain, we end up getting the IP address and the IP address will also, uh, so the sender domain will also give us the D uh, RDNS check due to the IP address, which resolves to different parts. And this one over here, as long as it's pointing to 1E100, you know for a fact it's coming from Gmail and or otherwise, you know that it's also coming from here if you do a DNS check too. And these things matter because these two, these things are what is used to go ahead and check the blacklist to decide whether the actual IP or the, uh, the, the originating IP, which is this one over here, is listed in a particular set of blacklists and what you can and can't do at that point in time. Thank you.